Hi and welcome back. My name is Jeff Keen and this is Everyday Automation. Uh, in past tutorials we've shown how to manage SRXs using Sky Enterprise. Today, uh, Chet Napwalk is going to take us through a similar exercise managing EXs uh, using the Sky Enterprise Cloud Management Platform. Hello and welcome. I am Chet Napwalkie with Juniper Networks. Today I am going to be showing you how to add a Juniper EX switch to the Juniper Sky Enterprise cloud-based management platform. To give a quick overview, I have a Juniper EX2300 switch that has been configured for network connectivity and is able to access the internet. Using a terminal session, I will be adding the configuration parameters necessary for the device to communicate with the Juniper Sky Enterprise cloud-based management. Let's get started. We're going to start off by going into the Sky Enterprise Cloud Management System. I've already logged in, so this is the default login page that you'll get to. You'll see if you have any existing devices. So we're going to add a device. We're going to add the switch in. We'll just give it a name, the category firewall switch and effect, so it is a switch. You can optionally add a description if you so want to. We'll create the device. And then once the device is created, we get the configlet. The configlet is the set of configuration parameters that we'll need to add to the device in order to get it to talk to the Sky platform. So we'll copy those. Next, we'll go over to the console. We'll log in. and then we will enter into the configuration mode and then we'll paste those commands from the configlet now when that is all done we'll commit those changes make them active and then once that is done we'll go over back to the dashboard refresh it and we'll see that the switches are ready in the system ready to go so some of the options that you have on the dashboard here are you can look and we can go into configure routing configure interfaces some of these will be using so since the device has not been configured except for the base configuration needed to get it into the system we're going to go first and we're going to configure our interfaces and VLANs so you can see real quick from snapshot all the interfaces are listed um, whether or not they are enabled and whether or not they're active so we actually have uh, port 0 connected and the rest uh, don't have anything on there we do have our management interface down here and you'll see that there is the IP address that we've assigned to the management interface if we so wish we could go in here edit that interface and we could change the management IP address to whatever we need to or change it if needed. So the first step is we're going to go into the VLANs. So right now all the devices are in the default VLAN. That's not optimal for our configuration so what we're going to do is we're going to create a couple of VLANs to put our users into and then we also have an access point on the switch we want to keep the wireless devices separate. So we're going to create a user VLAN and we will name it and we'll give that uh, an ID of 100 and then once that's done we'll go in and then we will create an additional VLAN for the wireless device and we'll call that wireless and we'll give that a VLAN ID of 200. So what's happening every time I do either create or save it's actually applying that configuration to the device um, immediately upon that click. So those are actually on the device ready to go. So we have created the user VLAN and the wireless VLAN and you'll see still all the ports are in the default VLAN. So we'll go back to our interfaces and now we're going to assign them to the proper VLANs. 
So we're going to use Giggy Zero as our trunk port. So we'll go into, we'll edit the interface. It'll give it a description because this is a unique one. So we're going to do trunk decor. Administratively, it's enabled by default. All interfaces by default are in the default VLAN. And the default interface mode is access. Even though it doesn't say it, that's the default configuration. But we're going to make this a trunk port. And we're going to remove it from the default VLANs because we want to make that trunk port users. And the wireless are the VLANs that we're going to carry up into the core. So next, our access point is on the next port that we're going to configure. So you'll see here, it's a trunk port, switch, trunk, and it has the VLANs that it's attached to. Next, gigabit ethernet port 1, that's our access point. So we're going to edit that interface. We're going to name it because that is a special port. We're going to put it into the wires VLAN. You, you don't necessarily have to do this. You can specify access, but again, by default, it is the access port mode. So some of the additional parameters, since that is an access port, we can go into, and this applies to almost all the other ports as well, on a power over ethernet switch, is we can bounce that interface. So if you want to either do a link state on off for a device, same thing as turning the interface on and off administratively, um, or if you want to reboot a power over ethernet device, that will bounce it as well. We also can modify the PoE settings. So you can set, you can enable or disable power over ethernet on a specific port. You can also set the priority so when you, when the power gets oversubscribed, what priority should I start shutting off ports if I do oversubscribe my PoE? And as well as you can set the maximum power that a port can actually provide. So now the rest of the devices, I want to ask, I want to change and become user ports. So we'll pick port two. I'll go in there. I'll edit that interface just like we did with the wireless port. We're not going to necessarily give a description because that's just a regular user port. We're going to change the VLAN to the user. We don't necessarily have to change it to access. We can leave it the same. Because as you'll notice if you look down the list, even though that's not says access, all the, all the interfaces in this list do show as access except for the first port, the port zero being a trunk. So you'll see that's a user port, port two. So I could go and do that for all the individual ports, and that could be quite cumbersome, especially if you have a 24 or 48 port switch. This is only 12 ports. So to help with that, we have the range option. So under the range options, what we're going to do is we're going to create an interface range. What the interface range allows me to do is create a group of interfaces that I can configure as one lump sum. And that what that allows me to do is eliminate having to go into each individual port and configure all the different VLANs on every port. I can configure them as a group. So we'll just name the group. We'll just call them user ports. We can go into each individual member and select everyone. That might get a little cumbersome, but what that allows you to do is to do, do ports that are not contiguous, but since all the ports in the switch are contiguous. What we can do is we can do all of them in one range. So we'll do all the ports from three to nine. We'll set that to the user VLAN. So when that's done, what that did was it applied that VLAN, user VLAN 100 to all those ports. So let's go back over and look at that. So you'll see here, ports three, four, five, six, all those were now applied to the user VLAN. Now let's go look at some additional actions we can perform. So we'll go up to the device. We'll use the pull down menu. Let's go over to system and monitoring. Some additional features. So 
we can create a rescue configuration, which once you have the base config, it's good to create one of those. So we can save that. We could reboot if we needed to. Or we can actually look at the full configuration. So there's one final option I'd like to show you before I end this informative tutorial. So we'll go back to the devices. And we're going to go look at the device details. What that gives me is the host name, the model of the device, its IP address, as well as the serial number. But the important thing here too is also the software release. So you'll see what's running on it, as well as this little symbol here that's going to tell me what the device is running versus compared to what the Juniper recommended Junos version is. That does not necessarily mean you have to run that version. It can all, all really depends on the environment in which you're running, whether or not you need to upgrade, downgrade, or leave the device alone. If you decide either you need to do upgrade or downgrade the operating system version, you can click on here, which will take you into the section that will allow you to deploy a software update or downgrade to the device, schedule it, and so forth. In summary, I showed you how to add an EX switch to the Sky Enterprise Cloud Management System and perform the basic configuration tasks on that device.